Words to Bless Our Morning from my poet crush, John O'Donohue. I give thanks for arriving safely in a new dawn, for the gift of eyes to see the world, the gift of mind to feel at home in my life, the waves of possibility breaking on the shore of dawn, the harvest of the past that awaits my hunger, and all the furtherings this new day will bring. Good morning, May. Good morning, friends. Welcome all and thank you for bringing your warmth, your light to the North Chapel this Sunday. I am Mary Jean Taylor, honored as always to be helping with the service. This North Chapel is beloved. I've said these words before, but they bear repeating. A most special place, a most special space. If by chance you have walked through the doors for the first time today or in recent weeks, you will soon know what many of us do already. Under this roof, within these walls, all are welcome and safe. Peace is found, joy celebrated, sorrow shared. And while our church is beautiful, it becomes sacred because we, because you are here. Thank you for bringing the blessing of your presence to this day. There are some tidbits to share with you. We are, as most if not all of you already know, humming and not singing these days. It's just one more thing we are doing to try and keep one another safe, but boy, do we miss the choir and the singing. A reminder that this is a wonderful time to leave the world behind for just a little while, which includes turning off or silencing your cell phone if you haven't already thought to do so. Your order of service is not only today's program, but a guide to all things North Chapel. Be certain to take a peek. So a few announcements. Um, first, please help support Ukraine by donating something in the basket at the back of the sanctuary and choosing a pin or a button to show your support if you'd like. Also save the date Sunday, June 26 at 2 p.m. here for our Ukraine fundraiser in poetry, dance, and music. Proceeds to benefit the UU Service Committee, humanitarian, and aid in Ukraine. From buildings and ground, grounds, an important note, not so important today, but future days, the heat's getting turned off after today to save some monies as, as heating oil prices, as we all know are going through the roof. And so on the chilly days, bring a layer because it can be cold in here. And also we've gotten notice that um, there was a water pipe break in town and that some people's water has been affected and should not be, you shouldn't be drinking it. You've been notified as a resident. We don't know if it applies here. So we're suggesting that you don't drink the water here because we don't know, okay? I think those are all the announcements.
As you've noticed by now, our much loved minister, the Reverend Dr. Leon Dunkley is away today, but fear not, we're in good hands. My youngest child, my Molly, was one of the OG Change the World kids. She's 32 now. But she and her dad went on the first ever trip to Costa Rica way back when. Needless to say, our guest reflectors and the organization and work they are doing in our communities hold a very dear place in my heart and I know in all of yours also. We are so happy that Addie, Emma, Forrest, Oliver, and Sam have come to share updates with us, aided by Annie McSood. Happy May Day, everyone. Um, it's also known as International Workers' Day, and there are hard-won uh, rights that workers have won all around the world. And there are five worker bees who have come to grace us with their presence. And Karen Ganey, the facilitator of the Change the World Kids, is here. And Peter, is that you? And Peter, too. <laughs> Where's Phyllis? <laughs> um, for those of you who are new and don't know Change the World Kids, a lot of people mix it up and say, save the world kids. I know my sister always says, what are the save the world kids doing? And I think we're not gonna ask that of you, even though we're inclined to. But changing the world is what you're doing. And you've been doing it now since tw tw 2003. I remember um, my own, um, uh, clothesline being put up. I remember you stacking wood. I did a little film once about you that was part of the Vermont film thing and I followed a group of you around and you're just helping everybody and it's a wonderful thing and I don't know, there are five here, but Karen, how many are there in all? We have a group of about 25 right now. All right, yeah. well, it's an extraordinary privilege to have you here. So I was going to ask the kids to come up and kind of make a semicircle around here so that they can each one come for a few minutes and tell you the work that he or she is doing. And um, so I'll tell you which one is which. That's Emma, Forrest, we remember Forrest, we used to sing you out. <laughs> Addie, Sam, and Oliver. Um, so I, why don't you start? Okay, and then just speak up, and uh, I'm going to take another mic because one of the main things that we want to know is how we can support the work you're doing. And then if there's time, if anybody has any questions for the kids, I'll facilitate that at the end. Thank you for inviting us here today. We are honored to be able to share a little bit about the work we do as Change the World Kids. My name is Emma Allegretti, and I am a junior at the Woodstock Union High School. When I first found out about the climate crisis my eighth grade year, the prospect of our impending situation seemed too much to bear. The idea that me, being a small person in the large scheme of things, could never make a real impact and somehow improve our circumstances began to weigh me down every day. Change the World Kids took me in, inspired me, and gave me the tools to make a serious difference. Being a member of this group has given me the opportunity to harness my anger and passion for this issue and channel it into action, which I will never forget. Our involvement with climate justice really began in 2018 and 2019 when we joined efforts with Fridays for Future and Greta Thunberg's Call to Action. We organized a march from the high school to the green that kicked off the next couple of years of climate organizing. We collaborated with a lot of you and wrote letters to our legislators for bolder climate mitigation measures. We worked to get petitions signed in town to declare a climate emergency, which led to the hiring of the regional energy coordinator. And now we are working with Sustainable Woodstock, who was instrumental in helping our energy coordinator pass a bond initiative of $660,000 for infrastructure improvements to help Woodstock become net zero by 2030. We are now helping to plant a diverse array of native tree and shrub species to help local farms adopt regenerative agriculture practices. Additionally, in collaboration with the G Regeneration Corps, we have started our own agroforestry nursery that will supply local farms and BIPOC-owned land. 
We look forward to continuing this work and helping our town become more resilient in a climate uncertain future. Hello everyone, um, my name is Addie Wilson. I'm a senior at Woodstock and this is my sixth year as a Change the World kid um, and final year. Um, as many of you might know, in pre-pandemic times, we would host our anti-cabin fever dinners every Wednesday from January to April. I've been the chair of these dinners since 2018 and they are truly, in my opinion, one of the best parts of the organization. These dinners bring the community together and offer a certain warmth to cold winter nights. In 2020, after a couple of super successful and fun dinners, we were forced to cancel the remaining ones and our 2021 anti-cabin fever season due to the global pandemic. Anti-cabin fever dinners are such a big and important aspect to our group, so we were unsure how we could safely replace them. Luckily, the soup kit project came together through the collaboration of the Ottaquichi Health Center, the North Chapel Universalist Church, local chef Ken Woodhead, and community volunteers. Every Tuesday throughout the winter months, we made soup in this kitchen here, and it was so nice to be back in the kitchen working together to create something that will benefit many. We distributed the soup every Wednesday and it was incredibly rewarding. The small conversations you have and the smiles and the thank yous you receive are just so important and valuable. With everything going on in the world, the little things are worth so much more than they used to. The Soup Kit Project is such a wonderful way to connect to the community and to connect to people in general. We love this project because it is at the heart of our mission. Not only because it offers a chance to connect with the community, but also because the ingredients that we use to make the soup each week is donated, donated from willing hands and taking, taken out of the waste stream. Over the past two years, we have distributed just over 4,800 quarts of soup. And this has been distributed to the community. Um, we were able to wrap up the soup kit project this year with a fundraiser for Ukraine on the green. We just sold soup on the green and um, in total, we got um, $627 um, that was donated to the Ukrainian Red Cross. Um, it really does take a community effort to do what we did these past two years. So thank you all so much for not only the use of the kitchen here, but your ongoing support as well. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Leggett. Uh, I'm currently a junior at Woodstock High School and this is, I've been in Change World Kids for just over three years now, I think. And I'm gonna talk a little about our involvement in local food justice. So since the birth of Change World Kids, food justice and particularly in its connection to the climate crisis and social justice has been at the heart of our mission. Food insecurity is a severe yet often overlooked issue in Vermont, and it has only worsened from the repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic. An estimated one in four people currently faces food insecurity in our state, which has increased from one in six before the pandemic. In our continuous effort to promote positive change in the community, we strive to do all we can to help. In addition to the soup kit project, with which Addie just talked about, one of our dearest food justice projects has been our garden in Palm Frit. For more than 10 years, our group has harvested between 30 and 200 pounds of produce weekly that is donated to the Woodstock area food shelf stored in our root cellar and included in some of our community meals like the soup kit and anti-cabin fever dinners. In addition to our work in the garden, we recently released our food justice activity booklet which is a brief packet full of fun games and puzzles to introduce young children to the concept of food justice. We've been distributing these uh, to every elementary school in our district, food shelf guests, and we have some available for here for you guys today. Um, we believe that access to sustainable, healthy, and local food is a human right deserved by all. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Oliver Zott. Um, I'm also a junior at Woodstock High School and I've been in the group for just over two years. And I, I think uh, like the foundation of our mission and just like kind of the first part of our group 
was our community job program where um, we have done everything from a range of picking apples, uh, stacking wood, uh, shoveling snow. Um, and back at uh, the founding of the group in, in uh, 1998, um, the, the founders, Nika and Phoebe, when they were eight year olds, started this program of helping neighbors with tasks that were, you know, so sometimes a little too challenging to tackle alone for those people. And we've been um, continuing to do that and happy to do that um, since then. And I think that's one of like um, a lot of people's most like fond part of the group is like a lot of us just come together after school in groups of, you know, four or five people and just work together. And it's, it's, re it's really fun to just help out people in the community. And I think a big part of that is sort of breaking the stigma because we acknowledge that it's challenging to ask people for help when there's, you know, something that's just a little bit too difficult to do alone. But we are all um, really glad to help with that. And it's a, a really big part of, of Change World Kids and um, just each one of ours. Um, and I, um, in, in addition to um, those kind of individual job requests, we've all, also helped with um, nonprofit organizations, um, you know, events put on by them. Uh, I remember we did something in Windsor uh, last last fall, and we've helped with Glad Rags many, many times. And um, it's it's a a big part of our group, and we're really fortunate to have that. And um, you know, uh, everyone in this congregation or in the community at large, if um, please please consider reaching out if you ever need help with any small or, or large project. Um, thank you. Um, hello everyone, my name is Forrest Yeager. I'm a junior and I've been in um, Change World Kids for about five years now. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to share with you a little, about, a little bit about our work in Costa Rica, where we have been going every June for 18 years now. There we focus on protecting biodiversity, protecting habitat for native species and migratory birds, creating wildlife corridors, diversifying farms, conducting studies on trees and learning best practices for reforestation. The amazing thing is that many of the trees that we planted over the years have become forests up to 40 to 50 feet tall and are doing their part to draw down carbon from the atmosphere back into the soil. This work is so important to us because it connects us more deeply to the ideals of sustainability and shows us how interconnected the world's environments are. The trip is instrumental for us young adults as we learn important skills in both planting and leadership and get to witness a culture different from our own. Being a part of this project has impacted my life greatly and I'm so glad that it remains a central program of Change World Kids because the lessons and experiences are forever memorable. Thank you again for having us all here today, and we'd love to hear from you if you have any questions for us. And I guess we'll do, should we do questions now? Or? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. Thank you, everybody. Um, I, before we do questions, <laughs> it's very heartening to see you and hear from you. Um, before we do any questions that anyone might have, is there, are there any particular ways that we, as a community, looking for ways to be part of changing the world and part of the solution, can help you um, in any of your projects? And um, I'll see you later if there are, because we'll, we'll write them down and we'll actually do them. Yeah, I have, I have um, some things right here. All right, do um, you, do you want, well then we'll consider that the first question. Okay, yeah, okay. sure. Um, so there are lots of ways to join in and support this work. Uh, here's a brief list, but feel free to reach out to us with any questions and remember that we are also here to support you. So if you have any jobs that seem too daunting, let us know and we can come help. Um, we invite you to consider being a part of our Grow Some Feed Many program and grow an extra row in your garden for the community. We have brochures with information about this in the back. Uh, we are in need of clean grass clippings for mulch for our food justice gardens. You can donate herb plants for our new Cook with the Fresh Herbs garden. Uh, get involved with the town energy plan and advocate 
for net zero infrastructure for all future improvements. Donate wood to our free firewood project. Make a financial contribution. Um, truly, we can't do this work without the support from the community. And yeah. Good. And you have that written down somewhere here? Okay. Uh, in the back, I think. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I wondered before if there are any questions, but before we do that, um, if Karen and, and Peter, and or Peter, or both, would have something to say about this experience uh, that we're having here today. <laughs> Oh, thank you. So just the experience of being here today? Well, yeah. Yeah, well, so my name is Karen Gaby, and it's really great to see you all. And um, I've been a facilitator of this group for um, going into my third year, um, taking the ratings from Peter Bowen here. And um, working with the youth um, of Woodstock, and also we're branching out to other communities. We just started a chapter in um, South Portland and the Sharon area. Um, has, has really been you know, wonderful for me. I share a lot of the passions that we do around um, you know, creating solutions and really living into the change that we want to see. And I find that they um, keep me on the edge of that and um, ask really good questions. And I think um, it's important for us all to uh, be connected together intergenerationally. So I really appreciate the opportunity and I know the kids really appreciate the opportunity to connect with you all and hear about what your concerns are and what you're feeling passionate about. Um, and yeah, we really feel that that creates this, this strong fabric for um, not only changing the world, but kind of being uh, resilient and adaptable to the changes that are coming our way. So yeah, we're really grateful. And um, there's way for shares and our food justice activity booklets here and contact information. And we have a newsletter, so if you want to get on our email list, please provide us your email. Hello everyone, I'm Peter Bowen, and um, I uh, had the pleasure of being a parent of my three kids in town and seeing them virtually grow up within Team to World Kids. And it, it's such an opportunity for young adults to have a way to come together and doing stuff with Team to World Kids is generally really fun. Uh, just having everyone come together, especially after school. I was thinking about that when I said that out, or coming together after school and moving like five quarter firewood before it could start, and just how great and exciting that is. And also uh, thinking both locally but also globally that with Change World Kids, having a program in Costa Rica, and also doing work here, it's really an opportunity to think about what's happening on the ground and then how that relates to global issues for climate change. And I think so much of what's important for youth and young adults right now is not just to feel the, the weight of despair of what's happening in the world, but to have tangible ways to address it. So I just want to thank everyone here at the church for all of the myriad ways that you've supported Team the World Kids over the years. And under uh, Karen's facilitation, the group has really thrived during COVID, which is uh, quite incredible and, and really a wonderful part of our town. Thank you. Thanks for everything you do. It's really so important. My question is about Costa Rica. When you go there, how long do you stay? And do you have a local group that you work with uh, to develop the important activities that you're involved in? Yeah, so um, we stay there usually for about like 10 to 12 days. Uh, and we work, I forget the organization. Monteverde. Monteverde Institute. So we work with an organization there um, that could sort of plans our days for us and our activities. Well, thank you for your wonderful work and for coming to share it with us today. How do we get in touch with you? Do you have a phone number or do we call a church or uh, specifically tell us how to, get, how to reach you if we want to have uh, your services? 
Um, we have an email. It's um, changetheworldkids at gmail.com. And you can send requests for any jobs that need to be done or if you just want to contact us for any reason. Um, we'll be sure to check those and immediately get back to you. Well, thanks for sharing. It's really inspiring all the work that you're doing. And I hope that our little kids uh, follow in your footsteps someday. <laughs> but I was curious whether the work that you're doing has inspired you to pursue certain careers and, and uh, also to offer at least myself and probably other people here to help you in that pursuit. Yeah, um, I'm actually looking at colleges right now as a junior. And the work that I've done with Change the World Kids has inspired me to pursue um, a career in sustainability and specifically sustainable business in the future, because um, I think that's gonna be really important. So yeah, the specific colleges I'm looking for right now, um, the program, I'm looking at specific programs surrounded by, like that surround sustainability and stuff. And so that's definitely what I wanna do in my future. And it's because of the work that I've done with Change the World Kids. Anybody else want to answer that question? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I could. Um, so I guess the work that we do with like people in general and social justice and just the conversations we have at our meetings has really inspired me to kind of like, In I'm um, heading to Connecticut College in the fall and there I will be hoping to study um, government or in international relations in hopes to do work with like social justice in the future. And that's all thanks to Change the World Kids because of the conversations we've had and basically just the important topics that we keep close to our heart. I don't think this works well. You may just have to shout it out. <laughs> I'd like to know what your day is like and when, where you sleep, when you eat and who you, who you are um, with in the day in the daytime. In Costa Rica. Anywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Costa Rica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Molly's always been a little nosy. <laughs> So when we're in Costa Rica, uh, we the place where we spend the majority of our time is called La Calandria, and it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's a research station, and um, it's I'm pretty sure it's also in the town of Monteverde, um, and we uh, when we wake up. Um, we usually have like breakfast pretty early and everyone has coffee because the coffee is really good there. <laughs> and um, then we have, we go straight to planting usually. And um, I don't know how many hours we usually plant for, like three, four or five. Um, <laughs> and uh, it just goes by so quick, obviously. Um, and we have lunch and um, the afternoons are usually a little more open-ended. Sometimes we have like a little free time. Um, sometimes we have like presentations about um, the area and I really like those especially. Um, and uh, then we sometimes do more work in the afternoon. Um, and sometimes even go on like nature walks. Uh, and we then uh, go to sleep or like uh, play card games or something before. Lynn, uh, we have a, a small group of people that are interested in the forest carbon uh, as a storage and we can move carbon out of the atmosphere. And uh, we are old people, but we wonder if there's a possibility that we want to inspire some of the younger folks to join us in this effort. Uh, the forest that we have here is wonderful, and it's sucking that carbon now that these leaves are coming out. It's taking it right out of the atmosphere. It's a very important element in controlling the climate. 
So what I'm wondering is if we can get a subsidiary or a small group of the Changed World kids to join us old fogies in this forest conversation. <laughs> and how would I go about organizing it? Who would I approach? Um, we'd definitely be interested in working with you on that. Um, the best way to reach us would probably be our email and then we can coordinate with you on that and then we can bring it up at our weekly meetings and then see who's interested and then get back to you. Thank you. So that's change the world kids at email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we better wrap this up. Is there anyone burning to say one more thing? holding this, but it's not. <laughs> so I know that I speak for everyone here, and everyone who's not here who belongs to this church. We just thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for inspiring us. Thank you for taking on this burden to move us through hard times. We want to support you, and everybody, make sure you get whatever literature they brought so that we know how to, how to do the next. Most of the grown-ups in this room know how hard it is to come up and speak. You guys did a great job. I'm sure you were nervous about it, but you couldn't tell. We are proud of you. I know your families must be proud of you. 